Big news everyone, the moment that a lot of people have been waiting for has just happened. And that is, Miyabi has finally been revealed. And even though it was just a small 10 second video and a few images, there are a lot of things to talk about. We'll start with the simpler things, but there are two details that could really dictate the future of Zenless Zone Zero and just future characters as a whole. And of course, you know, the power creep in the game. So first things first, Miyabi is going to be an anomaly unit, which for those of you who played in the betas, you know, years and stuff ago, is of course different from what she was back then. She used to be an attacker, specifically an ice attacker, but we'll get to more about that in just a second. Now, to be fair though, that is what betas are for, right? Things can change, things are meant to change between the beta and the final release. And I know some people mentioned that they would be really mad if they change her from an attack to an anomaly unit, but honestly, I don't really see the issue here. Yes, she is anomaly, but without seeing her kit and what she does and how she uses her attacks, we don't really know what being an anomaly unit means. It just means that she'll probably scale off of anomaly stats. She could still play the exact same way that she did before. And also, again, we'll touch it on in just a second here, but the ice anomaly isn't like any of the other anomalies. It doesn't really do damage over time, but it shatters the enemies, which allows them to take a lot of crit damage, right? And crit damage is more considered like an attacker stat. So maybe Miyabi can still act like a typical attacker, you know, investing in crit damage and stuff like that. It's just that because she is able to freeze enemies and shatter them, the way she achieves that high crit rate and crit damage is through applying the element on them. Now, that being said, I am somewhat annoyed just in general, not because Miyabi herself is an anomaly unit, but that we are getting so many anomaly units. I know Harumasa was just shown off to be an attacker, but I mean, let's be real. Now that Miyabi has been revealed, I'm pretty sure everyone has already forgotten about Harumasa. But it's just that it does seem like we're sort of going down the Genshin path of everything has to be about reactions and anomalies and stuff like that. Which to be fair, they are strong and they are a core component of the game. But I mean, I've farmed so many crit damage main stat discs. Let me use them, please, I beg of you. I'm tired of farming freedom blues and chaos jazz. Just once, let me use my woodpecker electros. Alright, but next up is her element. Once again, in the beta, her element was ice. And now, we don't actually know what element she is. The symbol shown off here is something I don't think that we've seen before. I mean, it kind of looks like the ice element, but it's, it's not the same though. Now we know that there were other elements besides the standard fire, ice, electric, physical, and ether. Using the betas as reference once again, Sokaku used to be wind. So it's definitely not out of the realm of possibilities for new elements to be introduced. And just as an aside, I find it really funny because I feel like I, as well as many other people, were joking about these things happening only for it to come true. In the news video earlier this week, I jokingly said that they were holding off Miyabi because there was something big in her element and type reveal. And when I streamed patch 1.3 story, I jokingly said that they would make a new element just for Miyabi. And lo and behold, they went and did it. Now, that being said, I'd like to speculate a bit. This could of course be a whole new element, say like void or something. But then again, we already have ether, which I feel like is void. And also we've seen Miyabi's attack animation. So unless they also change her animations drastically, we've also seen her in cutscenes as well, where it does look like she's using very cold blue-like attack style. So it'd be hard to think of her as anything other than ice. So maybe instead of this being a secret sixth element, it could instead be an indication of a dual element type. For example, fire and ice. Ice because, I mean, that's what we've been seeing for a while now. And I say fire because that little ghosty spirit around her could act as like a minion that deals fire damage too, or applies fire damage somehow. And I mean, in theory, a lot of agents could be considered dual type already. It's just usually their element and then a very weak physical basic attack. As an example, Lucy, she does a lot of fire damage, but her boars do a lot of physical damage, right? Maybe this could be the reverse where Miyabi herself does ice damage and she can send out her little ghost to do fire damage. And what's more, from what we've been seeing as of late, this concept of two elements in one thing has been appearing more and more. Aside from the whole disorder shenanigans, for example, Yanagi being able to proc disorders by herself, not needing a second element, in 1.2 we had Chaos Jazz which was the disc set that increases both electric damage and fire damage by 15% each. Now, this set could have just been because they wanted a set to be used for both Bernice in 1.2 and then Yanagi in 1.3, especially since there were no new disc sets introduced in 1.3. But could you imagine if a unit could take advantage of both the fire and the electric damage increase of that set? 
Who knows? Maybe there will be a fire and ice disc set introduced in 1.4 to go along with a dual type Miyabi. And then let's not forget Lighter as well, who was also revealed not too long ago. He is able to buff both the team's ice and fire damage. And speaking of Lighter, of course he is coming up in a few weeks as the second banner of patch 1.3 and it does seem like characters released close together have good synergy. We had Shu Yen into Ching Yi, we had sort of I guess Jane into Caesar. Caesar can you know provide a shield for Jane. I mean honestly Caesar could just work with anyone. And then we had Bernice releasing right next to Yanagi and so on and so forth. And lastly something that you might not have even noticed in the reveal because it's something that is entirely unique for Miyabi is a little symbol next to her name. Not her element or her typing. It's this, a small little symbol that you might just miss, you know, as a little background thing. Now at first this might seem like just a random symbol, but in a teaser released before the game even came out, which talked about the lore behind Eridu before the collapse, this symbol appeared when talking about the Void Hunters, seven of the strongest people who helped fight during the collapse of old Eridu. Now, to be fair, this Hoshimi Miyabi, as far as we know, is not the same Swordmaster shown in the teaser, but instead she's supposedly a descendant of them, hence why she shows up at the memorial site to mention going for revenge at the end of 1.2. Although section 6 and others have also been referring to Miyabi as a void hunter, so this could have a lot of implications both lore-wise and in-game character-wise. Maybe this is some shenanigans where this Miyabi here is actually the same sword master from old Eridu who's been hiding in secret or whatever, but that's just, you know, me throwing out random guesses. But in terms of the game, it also means there is a possibility for six more Void Hunters to appear. Whether this will be the old Void Hunters from before or a new group, time will tell. But this could effectively be the first Archon equivalent character that we get in Zenless Zone Zero. And just as a last side note, I, again, I do think it's funny that they waited so long to reveal Miyabi though. Of course, holding off builds the suspense for her, but waiting until after Yanagi's banner has already started does make it seem kind of like pulling a bait and switch. Waiting for people to spend their polychromes and money trying to get Yanagi, only for them to see Miyabi and go, oh no, I just spent everything. I guess I'll have to swipe my credit card to make sure I can get Miyabi now, is kind of funny. Which again, kind of alludes back to what I said earlier this week about how it's almost like the devs are treating Miyabi as an emergency piggy bank. But that's all I have to say and all we really can say about Miyabi right now since that was all that was shown off. Let me know in the comments down below though. Does this change your opinion on pulling Miyabi? I know there have been very polarizing thoughts on Miyabi. People saying, oh, I can't wait for her or Ooh, I don't get the, the hype about her. I don't really see what's so cool about her. I will say, with this introduction of a new possible element and the little Void Hunter symbol, I am definitely now being converted into someone that is not really interested or hyped about Miyabi, but more, I'm curious about her. Personally, for me, I'm curious because if this is a Void Hunter thing, that means that there are more Archons. And I am really hoping that this is more of the former of what I said, where there's a possibility for some of the old Void Hunters to appear. Again, I highly recommend you go check out that lore video because there are some really cool characters. Specifically, one of them is called Sunbringer, and she is the one that was behind the creation of Bang Boos. I would love to play as that character. There's also some like really, really, really big dude, like bigger than Big Ben, I would argue, in there as well. So just seeing another wacky character like that would also be very nice. And I know, obviously, the big thing that everyone will discuss is the concept of power creep. Is Miyabi going to power creep everyone else? Honestly, she probably is. But I mean, that's the trend of games like this. You would expect every new character to be stronger. And if they're giving Miyabi this much special treatment, I would hope that she is stronger than everybody else that we have so far. I just hope that she doesn't become an absolute must-pull. Like, to a point where if you don't have Miyabi, you can no longer clear anything else, right? Power creep is fine. As long as the people that get power crept are still usable, I'll be happy. But as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Otherwise though, if you found this video useful, liking, commenting, subscribing always helps out. So until next time, bye bye.